Talk to the younger players today, Gary. What was that all about? Well, reminding them of what um, I do at this football club and what this football club is all about, in, uh, about um, investing in the lives of young men and making sure that this is not just about producing outstanding young players for tomorrow, but uh, producing outstanding young men who will have benefited from this academy no matter what they go on to do. Of too many of our academies up and down the country, with the exception of Oxford United, are absolutely focused on producing young players for first-team football. Uh, and I think sometimes think they might miss a trick about preparing those young men for life outside football. Physically very fit, you've got to be mentally tough to come through here. Or at that age, there's a lot going on, isn't there, which you can help with. Well, the joke of people like me is that we all survive adolescence, we don't enjoy it. And to try to come out the other side in one piece is quite a job for any of us. But if you can imagine a young player who has the pressures of trying to be an elite athlete on their shoulders, that makes it even harder. And then if you look at the worldwide pandemic and trying to get to grips with what that does to our young players, makes it even harder. This is a terrible time for all of us. It's a terrible time to be an adolescent and put the stresses and strains of being an athlete on top of that. It's very, very hard for them. Maybe they just need a reminding of that today. They, they were brilliant, actually. They, they, you asked them um, examples and they chirped in and they were good. They, they are um, an exceptional group of young men, aren't they? We're very lucky here at yeah. Oxford United about how we look after some of the young men that we have in our charge. Um, and I'd like to think, as uh, club-wide, we, make a, we go the extra mile to make sure those young people are catered for, not only as developing them completely as footballers, but as young people as well, and their development not just only physically but psychologically too. Uh, I can't have you on here without talking to the wider fan base about this, because we've had um, mental health that you've been brilliant all the way through, you've given us uh, advice and ideas and tips and stuff. We're coming to the end of the second lockdown. Mm. There's Christmas around the corner. This is, I suspect this might be one of the toughest times of the entire year. Should people be prepared for that? It's not like joy, we're out of lockdown. I think there's tough times ahead, aren't there? Yes, I think there are. And of course, we still don't know as of right now which tier this, this part of the world is going to be in. And then you're le left with difficult questions that even if you can do something, should you do something? Just because we can do anything in our lives, Chris, doesn't mean they necessarily have to do it. So it's about keeping ourselves safe and keeping other people safe as well. And I think uh, the, one of the basic founding principles of the work I do is we have to keep ourselves in a good place. Because if we are in a good place, we can help other people be in a good place. Yes, be with loved ones, but think about that appropriately. Is your visit absolutely necessary? For example, does that person live on their own? Where then the answer could be, well, being on their own it is necessary. If that person lives with other people, is your visit necessary? We, it, it's more nuanced than that. Keep yourself safe. Keep other people safe. Can I still go around for Christmas? No. <laughs>